Thank you for staying with me on Crunch Econometrics. This is the seventh of nine GMM video series and we are going to look at how to interpret any GMM output. But before I proceed, I want to say thank you all for the feedback I received on all these preceding videos. Whenever you have any GMM output, these are the things you need to look out for. Check out the value of the Hansen statistic. This tells you whether you are using valid instruments. Look out for the value of the AR2 statistic. It tells you whether your model is suffering from second order serial correlation. Check the p-value of the lag dependent variable, whether it's significant or not. Check the p-values of other coefficients to see how many of your coefficients are significant. Make sure that the number of instruments is lower than the number of groups. Look out for the value of the F statistics and its p-value because they tell you whether your regressors are jointly significant in explaining the dependent variable. Other information you need to consider, always know that GMM estimates are short-run estimates. Always remember to give a ceteris paribus interpretation and limit interpretations to only significant coefficients. As a matter of emphasis, watch out for the number of instruments, the Hansen and AR2 statistics. Then generate long-run estimates for only the significant coefficients. So I will cover this point number five in the next video. So here is the statal output from a two-step system GMM estimation. At the top of the table, you will always see the type of estimation that you have just performed. In this case, we have a two-step system GMM. So this is a typical GMM output. So whether it's a difference GMM or system GMM, the outputs look exactly the same. Only the contents are different. At the upper part of the table, you have some information that is specific to your data and which also tells you whether your model is correctly specified. You have the IDs for the groups and the IDs for the year. You have information on the number of your instruments and you have information on the value of the F statistics and the probability value. You also have information on the number of observations, the number of groups in your data, and you have statistics relating to observations. If you notice that I have 48 groups here, but in my panel I have 54. So maybe six of them do not have sufficient observations. That is why Stata dropped them. So at the end of the day, I'm having 48 groups being reported for this particular output. In the body of the output here, you have information relating to the variables that you have used to run that model. At the corner here, this is the dependent variable. This is the outcome variable that we are explaining. And below, you have information on the regressors or the explanatory variables. Remember, I've always emphasized year dummies. So these are the year dummies. I will also suspend the explanation for the year dummies to the final video where I'll show you how to plot the various uh, coefficients for the year dummies. But let me just say here that when you are interpreting your year dummies, you are going to interpret each year in relation to the base year, which is 2005. Like I said before, whenever you generate the output, look out for only the significant coefficients. Once a coefficient is not significant, please do not bother to explain. Only limit explanation to significant coefficients. Immediately after the results, we have this portion which shows the way your instruments are computed in this particular output. We have two classes of instruments. We have the first one, which is for orthogonal deviations equation. That is for the first difference equation. And we have instruments for the level equation. Immediately after that, we now have the statistics for the AR1, AR2, Sagan, and Hansen. By now, I'm very sure that most of you can easily interpret your AR1, AR2, Sagan, and Hansen because I've been talking about this right from the onset of this GMM series. So like I said, this is how a typical GMM result looks like and it is not right for you to just paste it like this in your manuscript and send to that journal or put it in your thesis for your supervisor to read. This is not good at all. So you have to export it to MS Word or Excel and do some little um, fine tuning so that your table can actually look presentable. If you don't know how to export your stata output, please watch my video on exporting stata output. 
and you will know exactly what to do. So I have a table already cleaned out in PowerPoint. So let's go over there and we continue our explanation. On the screen is a table that I've already cleaned out. This table is not the table that I just showed you in Stata. I just prepared this table for the sake of this uh, tutorial. But it's cleaned out and you can see that it looks a lot more presentable than the initial Stata output. So like I said here, please spend some efforts on your tables. Don't just splash the Stata output to your manuscript and send to that journal or just put it like that in your thesis. Please do something that is presentable to the reader. Number two, present all results. Both significant and not significant coefficients must be shown in your table. And below that, indicates the salient diagnostics. We are interested in knowing whether you use year dummies. We want to see the number of your observations, the value of the F statistics, the number of groups and instruments used, the values of AR2 and Hansen. So please indicate all these in your table. And when you want to interpret, like I said, interpret only significant coefficients. When you are interpreting, we want to know the magnitude, interpret it in the short run, mention the significance level, and always give it a ceteris paribus interpretation. Taking a look at this table, you will observe that all my variables are in logs, both the dependent and the explanatory variables are in logs. So my interpretation is going to be an elasticity interpretation. So I'm using an elasticity relationship here, which makes interpretation very, very easy. So for example, how do we interpret the coefficient of mobile or how do we interpret the relationship between mobile and economic growth proxied by GDP? So I've written out the example here. So just follow my interpretation. I said a percentage change in mobile subscription is associated with a 0.168% increase in economic growth in the short run at the 10% significance level on average ceteris paribus. Hence, mobile subscription and economic growth exhibit an inelastic relationship. So you can see that I have included every specifics of this result. I have mentioned the magnitude, which is 0.168%. I've mentioned that is a short-run analysis. I've also indicated the significance level, which is 10%. And my interpretation is in ceteris paribus, which shows that I'm holding every other regressor in the model constant. And because it is an elasticity relationship, I've also indicated that there is an inelastic relationship between the two of them. That is, a percentage change in mobile subscription will only result in a less than 1% change in economic growth, which is an inelastic relationship. So you may not exactly ex interpret your own result the way I've done mine, but this is just to give you an idea on how to interpret your GMM result. It's very simple to interpret. They are short-run estimates. Always give ceteris paribus interpretation. And below your table, you can just explain some other details about your results by indicating the statistical significance level, as you can see that I've done here. And always mention that you are the author of your results. So this is a typical system GMM result. And this is the way it should be presented in your paper. So whether you are using uh, Stata or eViews, it doesn't matter. Please present your tables in a very good way. Stay with me. My next video, I will show you how to generate long-run GMM estimates only for the significant short-run coefficients. Thank you once again for staying with me. Thank you for sharing my videos. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so. Please tell others about Crunch Econometrics. Please follow my Facebook page. Join me on Reddit and uh, you can always tweet my uh, videos whenever you see them on Twitter. Please don't go away. I'll be right back.